I'm the Alloy Geek. In this video, we're going to talk about how to take the data from your PSYOPS X-Series XRF analyzer and put it onto a computer. Now, today I'm using the PSYOPS X550, but most of the PSYOPS analyzers are going to work the same, whether that's a LIBS or an XRF analyzer. So I've mirrored the screen here so you'll be able to see exactly what we're doing. The first thing we need to do is we need to actually export the results. So how we do that is we connect to our analyzer. Now, to connect, there is a rubber boot that, that's underneath the back side of the analyzer. So it's back under here. And then there's a USB port there, which you plug one into, one end into, and of course one end into the computer. That USB port typically comes with your PSYOPS X550. If you're missing that, you can find another one on alloygeek.com, um, but there, it's a pretty standard USB port. So then you're going to take the data, um, uh, you're going to take the data on your analyzer and export that to an SD card. So I'll show you how to do that. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into the results mode. So you're going to click on results and you can see we have all these different results here. Now, if you have a lot of results or you're trying to filter by specific date ranges and take specific results off, I'll show you how to do that too. The first thing you would do is you can click this. There's three buttons up top. There is the back. Well, of course, there's the back arrow, but there is this um, checkbox icon. There's this box that looks like you're getting out of the box with an arrow. And then there's the dot, dot, dot here. We're actually going to first hit this box with the arrow out of it, the one in the middle. And what you'll see is we're exporting 199 results. Now, I didn't do 199 results and I don't really need all that data right now. So I don't really want to do that. So I don't want to export that. I only want to export the results that I need. Let's make the view a little bit better and show you guys how to set a date range. First thing you do is you hit this dot, dot, dot icon in the upper right. Then you hit filter by date range and you hit set date range. And all you're going to do is you're going to select, you're going to select the date range that you want to see. And now you can see we are only showing that date range. You may have to reset that if you're looking for other, um, um, if you're looking for other results, you may need to reset the date range. So I'm going to click out of that. Uh, I don't necessarily need to do that for this demonstration because all I'm going to do is I want the one result I did today. That is the 6061 aluminum up top. I could, of course, check as many boxes as I want, but I just need that one result. And I'm going to, I need to export that in a CSV or a Microsoft Excel style uh, export. And now that I've selected the one, now you'll see it says export one result. So that's really helpful. Now we hit, we go to the SD card. And like I said, we want to do Excel. This is the path where that file is going to be going. Remember that is on this device that is not on your computer. You can follow along on your device. I just mirrored the screen and I'm navigating from the computer to show you a little bit better. But all of these, what we're doing at this current time is all on the analyzer screen itself. Now we choose our template. In this case, we're just doing alloy or the aluminum mode. Um, and then we just hit start export. And you'll see in just a second, everything gets exported. Now we have the data exported to the SD card, but we need to take the data on the computer. So what I'm going to show you here is you're going to navigate to um, once the analyzer is plugged in at this is the point where some people get stuck. OK, so if you're working for a large company that has an IT department that blocks USB devices or drives, this is the point where you could have an issue with that. Um, talk to your IT department if you're not able to connect. It's typically just IT's blocked USB drives um, for safety reasons for your organization's IT safety. So just talk to them about it, make an exception for the PSYOPs and you can be able to move forward. But you're going to go to my PC and the, the drive you're going to open is called NGX. If you double click that, you're going to get the SD card that's on the device itself and you're going to get a list of folders. And it's going to seem intimidating at first because there's a lot of folders here. We just care about what we exported. So find the export folder and open that. Now I want to pause here for a moment and say there's essentially three ways to export different data from this device. Um, the first way, uh, I took a screenshot earlier and I really like this. So if you're making a report for somebody or you wanted to show a result or show how the analyzer worked or create instructions for your organization, that's a great way to do that. You actually take screenshots in each result. You can do that and save them. They save right in this folder. I find that really helpful um, when doing trainings and things. Um, so we exported a CSV file. You can see if I open that folder here, I've got all my CSV files here. I can double click that file and boom, I've got my results. But the results are still on the analyzer. So I just wanna take this result, I'm gonna cut it with Control X and I'm gonna paste it right on my desktop. In this case, I've already done this today. 
Um, I could change the file names, but uh, for the demonstration purposes today, it doesn't really make any difference. And you'll see that my file is right here. Now, when you're working with these CSV files, um, a personal note from me, and you're not gonna get this from pretty much anybody else, but uh, the secret here is to always save these files. If you go file and you save, save them as, and save them as a work uh, document. All right, workbook document. So another type of standard Excel document. CSV files will allow you to have some Excel functionality in them, but they may not save your work if you do graphs and charts and other things like that. So save it as a workbook file if you're gonna be doing some more advanced data analysis, and that'll save you a lot of headache in the future. I know it certainly has for me. So that's it. That's how you take the data off. The PDF would work the same. And so on to part two here, we're actually gonna look at the profile builder software. So the first thing we need to do is open that up. I've already done that. You can see it's on my desktop. Top, it's got this kind of this off angle triangle green triangle icon and what we're going to do is open that software package up in fact I'm going to exit that so you guys can see how it loads because I think that's important for how we connect to it and I'll show you even how I mirrored my screen here so you'll see this screen first and you'll see USB tethering in the bottom left and it's red so what we actually have to do in order to get USB tethering to work to show you guys the screen and other things like that um, you're going to swipe the analyze screen to the right and you're going to select remote service. Now, once you do that, you'll notice that choose an analyzer to download this big green button here that pops up. That's what you want to see. If you don't see that, you might again have USB ports that are blocked, um, but you can click that. Now, again, I've already done this download, so it's saying, oh my gosh, it's going to override it. Yeah, that's fine. So now that we have, um, we're downloading the data, it just takes a second to do that. And um, this is gonna allow us to do some more advanced um, stuff with our data. And I think it's a little bit easier to navigate like bigger data sets on a computer versus doing it all uh, on the instrument itself. So you'll see there's a mode that we're in here. I'm gonna select, keep the alloy selected. We're not doing a lead paint or precious metals or anything. We're just doing a um, basically alloy mode. And then we wanna see testing and results. So I'm gonna click that. Now, if you wanna mirror your screen, like what I did on the video, on the bottom, you see that little white box? mirror screen or screen mirroring excuse me you can click that and then you can see my bookshelf storage racks next door here on the camera um, but that'll let you totally run the instrument from your computer which i think is great so now we have um, the new window here we're actually in the results you'll notice if you hit this scan alloy button that actually is showing you that it's going to do a five second heavy beam and a 10 second light element beam um, it will fire the beam. You can run this remotely, so don't click that unless you're ready for it. Um, and then down below, there's a date range you can select or a single date. Today is December 21st, so I'm gonna do that one result, but a date range would be as simple as selecting the right date range for you. And then you're gonna click on your result. Now, if you hold Control or Shift, you can select multiple results and overlay them here. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna take a look at the one result and export that. Um, and then you're thinking to yourself, okay, now what do you do? Well, to export that result, we hit this export button up top here and we can do a PDF file there, right? I could even customize it and change the fields uh, very easily of what I want in that PDF file when it gets exported. That's great. So now the folder here, um, I'm actually gonna select my desktop. And it's probably gonna yell at me because I've already done this for today. Um, so if I hit export now, all results are exported. That's great. So we're all set. Now, let's go look at that file. Here is our PDF we just did. So what you'll find is that it says PSYOPs, it has a material report, and then there's a date and a time and a reading number. So for quality control purposes, that's a great thing to have traceability of. Down below that, you have the serial number and the model number of the analyzer that took the reading. Another really great thing to know where that result came from. And then GPS location is important for some mining folks out there who are who are actually testing soil samples and rock samples, other kinds of mining samples, you know, in big areas, and they want to have a GPS result associated with that. This is not a mining analyzer, and I did not uh, do turn that feature on here, uh, but it is there along with barcode and sample ID and other information. Well, the, the beauty of this report, actually, I really like this report because it's simple. You've got the alloy with the top grade match here, the next two closest alloy matches, um, grade matches down below that, and then a beautiful, very simplistic display of the chemical um, 
analysis that was done. And that's it. This is an easy report to send to somebody. You can email this to somebody and say, hey, that load is 6063. You sent all the material tested as 6061. This is what we got. It's really hard to argue with that. If you're talking about rejected loads or just building trust with your supply base, um, maybe it's somebody you worked with a long time and he didn't know the material was one thing. Or he thought it was one thing. It was another. This is a great way just to work with people and build trust and make sure that they know that you're doing your due diligence on your end too. If you're in a quality control application, you have all the information here that you would need to log this data um, and, and make a decision. So really like this uh, profile builder software. Now here's a couple of bonus features for you. If you're a more advanced user or a research user, you'll notice that the intensity peaks are all listed here. You can actually hit the submission lines in the upper right of the profile builder software. And for example, you see this big blue spike here, right? If I hit the aluminum peaks, it's gonna show me which aluminum peaks are are present in the sample. I think that's really cool because uh, it's very easy to forget where all that stuff is unless you're an application scientist working on XRF, right? So for those of us in the field, maybe we see a little blip somewhere. We, we can actually zoom in. So if I zoom in on these peaks here, um, I can either display the other elements uh, over them or I can actually click directly on this a graph to see that oh that's an iron peak right so you're able to quickly see what the peaks mean in fact you can keep zooming in as well i keep getting this little blip i think there's supposed to be something else in there and that's how you could maybe do some further analysis of the results now you could clear the lines up here by just hitting clear and to reset the graph because you could really distort this graph like really it's nice because you can zoom in and zoom out really easy but you can see how wonky it looks really quick just hit this target icon and everything snaps back to the way it originally was. And that's pretty much it for the Profile Builder software. So now you know how to take your data from your PSYOPs X-Series XRF and put it onto the computer. You also know a little bit about the Profile Builder software and how that's useful. If you were doing a demonstration for somebody or you wanted to show them the screen while you're doing the analysis for a webinar or something like that for one of your customers, you can even mirror the screen with the Profile Builder software. And I think that's a great feature to have for any XRF. Hope you learned something today. If you did, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time.